What's up? Long Live Your Turtle here, and today's video is all about turtles, sponge filters, and how you can make them live peacefully together. Alright, so a couple weeks ago, I decided I want to install two sponge filters in my 75 gallon aquarium. I have a Cascade 1200 canister filter, but I wanted to give a little boost of filtration to my tank without doing much. And an excellent way to do that is to add a sponge filter. So I went ahead and I got two sponge filters and this is what they look like now. So I had read before I installed these in a turtle tank that turtles tend to nip and bite at sponge filters. Why do they do that? Because a lot of waste and possible food particles build up on sponge filters and they look like a tasty little snack. I kept an eye on them. They kept nipping at this. They would not eat it. They would just spit it back out. But this is the result of having sponge filters with slider turtles. Slider turtles are known to bite everything, so I'm not surprised at all that this was the outcome. So we can do a little better than buying them, trying them, and seeing that they didn't work, giving up. Let's fix this. Let me show you a way that you can stop your turtle from biting your sponge filters so you can reap the awesome benefits of using a sponge filter in your turtle tank to supplement your canister filter or whatever other filtration you have because turtles poop a lot. They need as much filtration as you can get. And I'm not giving up on these sponge filters. So. My tank is a total mess, as you can see behind me. It needs a full filter cleaning and water change. I'm gonna do that real quick. And then let's get to installing a new sponge filter that is going to be turtle proof. All right, so I did a 95% water change on my tank and I cleaned the filter out. It had been about a month and that thing was looking real dirty. And now it's time to install my new sponge filter. Now this is an Aqua Neat sponge filter that I purchased on Amazon. It had good ratings and I'm gonna trust those ratings that this thing is a good sponge filter. There are tons of sponge filters out there. They have different shapes. Um, they have different coarseness. They have a different structure of the sponge. All of that definitely have an effect, but I think overall, uh, stick with the good reviewed sponge filters and you should be in good hands. Now sponge filters are super popular with fish stores or fish rooms or hobbyists with lots of fish or hobbyists that just don't want to deal with a big canister or hang on the back or complicated filter that can take quite a bit of time to clean out and maintain. So sponge filters are super simple. Let's quickly go over how they work. So on the top you have this plastic cylinder. This is your lift tube. Basically helps the bubbles and the water move up through the sponge. You have your weighted base and this goes on the bottom and just helps hold the sponge on the bottom of your tank. On the inside you have your strainer and this is where your water is pulled in and then goes up through the strainer. On the top here you have a little nipple and that is called the bullseye and that's where you attach your air hosing. And then of course you have your sponge. It has a hole in it to hold that strainer and otherwise it's literally just a sponge. So as you can see it's four pieces which is amazing that this is a really efficient filter you can use. So with that, how does a sponge filter work? Well, when you hook in your air tubing into that bullseye and you turn your air on, your air is pushed through the bullseye down your tube in the middle of your strainer. Then it comes out at the bottom of your strainer. Now your air is less dense. Those air bubbles are going to push back up through your sponge filter. And with it, it's gonna create a vacuum that's gonna pull water from your tank through the sponge filter and follow that air through the lift tube here and out. So with the action of that water being pulled through the sponge, you have created mechanical filtration. So your dirty water is now going through this coarse sponge and the big particles are being caught by this sponge as your water goes 
through it, and then through the lift tube. So since this is a coarse sponge and there's also tons of surface area and you are oxygenating this water really well, there's going to be buildup of lots of beneficial bacteria in the sponge just like a canister filter sponge or anything that has surface area on it with a large water flow and oxygenated water. Your beneficial bacteria will thrive as that dirty water is pulled through this sponge. Now that's the basics of a sponge filter. The problem we talked about before was with all of that tasty gunk getting stuck on this filter, the turtles think it's a tasty snack and they just chomp at it and take chunks out of it and it makes a mess in the tank, is dislodged when they violently try to rip off a piece of the sponge. So sponge filters really aren't good with turtles and that's because they eat them, simple as that. But I think sponge filters are awesome and really efficient ways to clean an aquarium. And I have turtles, so they poop a ton, and I wanna get more filtration in that tank without having to upgrade to a bigger filter. So how can we protect this sponge so that the turtles don't bite and rip pieces off of it? What we're gonna do is we're going to install a gutter guard. Now, there are lots of versions of these out there. I got a gutter guard that will fit around this sponge filter as you're about to see. The product I got was Noms and it's cool. It comes with a, a bonus gardening gloves that they say to use in order to protect your hands when you install these. Now what they are is basically an aluminum screen that is open on one end and it's kind of flexible. Now I saw this and I was like, hmm, this looks like it would work really well to fit around this very similar shape, our sponge filter. So all you have to do here is take your sponge filter, fully assembled, and take your gutter guard screen and just open it up a little bit, wrap it around your sponge filter. Now this sponge filter is so big that it actually doesn't even wrap all the way around it. And these were the biggest gutter guards I could find. So luckily when you buy these gutter guards, they come with several. I think this came with four of them. So what we're gonna need is just two. And with that gap that you didn't fill in, just put another one around. This is what it looks like. Fully protected on all sides, and it even skirts down all the way to the base. Why the screen is a great choice, it's not super fine, so it's not gonna inhibit the operation of your sponge filter because there's still plenty of room for that water to flow in and out through our little chimney. So I know it doesn't look great. It's just silver aluminum and no, it doesn't look natural at all, but it's a sacrifice you're gonna have to make if you wanna use a sponge filter to increase the filtration in your tank without upgrading your fancy canister filter or hang on the back filter that you might already have. So if you really don't like the look of it, you could just paint the aluminum screen with an aquarium safe paint, like a, an acrylic. So if I really hate how this looks, I might just paint over this aluminum with a black acrylic paint. Um, that should do the trick. It would just look like a sponge filter in that case, and it would be back to its normal ugly self. Now to finish off our installation, what you'll need is you'll need an air pump. I'm gonna use an Air Whisper 40 air pump. Um, these are very common and very cheap. This is meant for a 40 gallon aquarium. You could probably go a little bigger for the sponge filter. This should do just fine. And you're gonna need your air tubing. So make sure the air tubing you buy is the right size to the air pump you got. So the last thing you want with a setup where you're using an air pump that's gonna be on the bottom of your tank, there's a chance that you could lose power and your air pump will shut off. It'll reverse the direction of flow and your water will go through the tubing into your pump, destroy your pump, and flood wherever you live because your tank water is now going to be all over your floor. Um, so really important that you get one of these valves. And just make sure when you install it, it's in the right direction. So what we're going to do is simple. You are going to attach one end into your air pump. And you're going to attach the other end into your sponge filter. It can be hard to actually install your tubing down through the lift tube if it's installed. So what I would suggest is just take your lift tube off and 
slide it down your air tubing and then slide your air tubing onto the bullseye. There we go. Don't forget to reinstall your lift tube. And voila, you now have your air pump hooked up to your sponge filter and it's ready to install. So before I install this in the tank, I'm gonna give it a really good rinse. So one thing I forgot to mention when installing a sponge filter for the first time is this thing is gonna float. It's a coarse sponge, so there's lots of places for air to get in there. And so when you put it in the water, just give it a few really good squeezes to get that air out and the water in. And that should help keep this sponge filter on the bottom of your tank when you first start out with it. Obviously there's no beneficial bacteria on it right now, so it's gonna act as a mechanical filter at first, but over time you're gonna get all that beneficial bacteria inside the sponge and it should start working like an excellent and really efficient filter for you. Keep an eye on how dirty it gets. Eventually it's gonna get so dirty it's basically gonna be a clogged filter and you're gonna have to take it out. When you do this be very careful um, some people put it in a bucket in their tank, so while they raise the bucket, this is inside of it so that you don't just dump all of that clogged mess everywhere in your tank and just totally destroy the tank's water. When you want to clean your tank, take this out very carefully. And when you do, just either use your tank water or treated water and just give this thing a ton of squeezes until all that gunk is out. And then, guess what? You're ready to reinstall this and go again. Now let's get this thing in the tank, get started up, and I'm gonna give it a week. I'm gonna show you guys how well our gutter guard, turtle guard system works. See you in a week. Turtle Guard wins. One week later. All right, it's been one week. You're probably asking yourself, does this guy just wear the same shirt every single day? The answer is yes. And the sponge filter with the gutter guard on it is a huge success. The turtles were probably interested in it for about one minute. They tried to get in there and get some bites with zero success. So that sponge filter is still 100% operational even after any attempt of turtle onslaught. So. Sponge filter with a gutter guard, two thumbs up, works like a charm. Now this is bare aluminum, so there might also be some corrosion. I'll keep an eye on that, but if there is some corrosion starting with that aluminum, I'm just gonna spray paint it. Um, it'll kill two birds with one stone, you'll have it looking a lot better, and you'll protect it from corrosion. So that's it. Putting a gutter guard over a sponge filter is an awesome defense against your turtles constant biting and interest in anything in your tank. And if you're looking for that extra filtration and you want something really cheap and really easy, sponge filters are the way to go. And I totally suggest using this method. Thanks for watching. This is Long Live Your Turtle. Like, subscribe, comment. See ya.